now we're going to take a look at Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden, and I'm joined by the game's executive producer, Ulf, who's here. Oh, I'm not. That's wrong. No, I'm, that's I'm a... here with Mark and Harolder. Yeah. Uh, guys, thank you so much for coming, coming by. Um, Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden is a lot of words, and I think a lot of people see this and they're like, this is a brand new thing. This is based on a 30-year-old RPG. That's correct. It's uh, based upon a, a uh, RPG uh, pen and paper book that was released in the mid-80s. And uh, it's seen a bit of a revival because it's been reprinted in uh, a English and it's been sent around different countries and around the world. Uh, so yeah, it's become quite a, a popular thing and we were lucky enough to get the rights to make the video game. Based yeah, on. actually it, uh, it's amazing that uh, this IP was able to survive uh, 30 years without uh, getting uh, turned into a video game. But when we knocked on, uh, on the IP owner's uh, door, they not only uh, made it happen, then they invested in the game and, and, and stick with us through our Tick and Fun. That's wonderful. I mean, yeah. the cool thing about having a, 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 an RPG that's been around for 30 years is you've had people playing it and effectively kind of like doing a dry run and, and sort of play testing it before you even build the game. Uh, and you've turned it into a really interesting game where it's real-time exploration and recon and then like turn-based tactical combat. That's true. We, we kind of wanted to get the game sort of to, uh, to uh, bring the best out of, the, uh, out of that world. And uh, having it as a, as a purebred uh, um, uh, turn-based game just didn't cut it. So we kind of in implemented the different elements of the game, bringing people from, from IO like, like Mark and Lee Barley that have uh, loads of years in, in, in making uh, uh, Hitman, bringing the stealth element, element into the game, which sort of bridges from, from uh, uh, free exploration into uh, turn-based, just made the whole thing click. Well, I mean, the, the, the gameplay of, of something like, you know, XCOM Enemy Unknown is, is really addictive, and I, I know a lot of people are really into that, uh, but that, that level of the, the stealth and exploration is a really nice added touch. Yeah. Uh, is, how is the world structured exactly? Is it like sort of separate environments, or is it one big...? Um, there's separate environments that are connected together, so it forms a, a world, uh, but they're, in se you know, they're definitely in sections uh, and separated by a loading period, right? So. Uh, but you can approach anything you want in any kind of uh, way you would like to choose. So you can go in for a stealthy approach, you can go in for a all guns blazing. Um, everything can be uh, handled uniquely by the player. Our, our way was sort of to, to, um, to uh, take There's the uh, craftsmanship of game uh, development and instead of sort of uh, focus on, on getting the game to um, be um, uh, crafted, so we have every plan keep, uh, level uh, carefully uh, crafted. So we think that the uh, the replayability of the game is in the gameplay and not in seeing new uh, skins sort of popping up yeah. every time you uh, to load the game. Yeah. Now, uh, as for the sort of the setting itself, this is uh, this is my first question: is why are there talking animals? Um, that's actually based upon an expansion for the uh, pen and paper RPG. Uh, where they have anthropomorphic uh, human or mutant animals, we would call them. Uh, and they're interesting characters. And that's actually one of the things we wanted to do was have some very interesting and more unique characters uh, to explore the world of uh, Mutant Year Zero with. Uh, so the uh, the setting itself, like what is what ha what happens? Something goes horribly wrong, and it's a it's a dystopia. Like, give me a little little context here. It's, it's kind of a, a post-human era. Uh, a lot of bad things have happened in in a relatively short period of time, and we're sort of recouping after that. Um, the the uh, boundary between men and uh, and animals uh, have uh, disappeared, uh, and uh, we have uh, humans and uh, animals, and then we have something in between called the mutants. I, I'm I'm really into that. I, I, there's something like I love this sort of uh, you know the, the tactical sort of guns versus aliens approach of XCOM, but then to have like something that's still very like it's very gritty and there's a lot of you know kind of dark stuff going on, but then you've got a duck named Ducks. Yeah. Uh, are, <laughs> how much how much character creation is there and customization? Um, you don't create uh, bespoke characters, but there are a lot of mutations and things that you can swap around for the characters. So as you play through the game, you'll unlock, um, of course, you can buy weapons and, and, and add-ons for your weapons and that kind of stuff, but you also unlock mutations, which you can, there's a mutation tree, which you can actually uh, pick and choose mutations, so your characters will evolve depending on your play style and what kind of enemies you, you uh, encounter in the world. Okay. Uh, could you give me like a few examples of sort of the the mutations and their and their tactical advantages? Okay. Well, um, 
we've got such uh, mutations as uh, stone skin, where you can turn your skin into stone, and uh, you can take a, a lot of damage from enemies, or you can absorb it. Uh, Mock Rock Leap is uh, one where you can actually uh, leap from one part of the uh, level to um, to another and uh, sort of uh, get tactical advantages. You have um, uh, moth uh, wings where you can sort of fly up for high cover uh, advantages. Uh, um, there are loads of different uh, mutations that sort of bring the game into a different uh, level as you sort of uh, play through the game. You get uh, start working with uh, armor and 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 uh, and, and uh, weapons and upgrades, and then once you see that that's not really uh, um, cutting the uh, <laughs> the edge, you need to get something else, and then uh, the uh, mutations sort of get you rolling. And that's nice. That's yeah. um, how many how many characters are there? Across the, throughout the game? Um, well, there's a number of characters you can recruit. I won't go into the details of how many you can recruit, but you can recruit more. I mean, we've shown three characters in our trailer. That's Borm and Ducks and Selma. Um, and there's more characters you can uh, you can recruit on top of that. But uh, yeah, I'd like to keep the lid on that. Do they do they kind of interact with each other relationship-wise? Like how much of sort of a social component is there to the, the story? Well, the game is kind of, uh, it's, it's a very uh, story-driven game. Uh, so uh, the interaction between the two main characters, which is the duck and the boar, uh, is like the uh, essence of the game. But uh, the additional characters can uh, lead the game and uh, drive the story. Yeah. OK, so on that note, uh, what, what's, what's going on in the story? We know that it's a sort of post-human world, but. Yeah, it's, it's set sometime after the end of the human race. Uh, the world's seen a few disasters. I mean, the game will explain this. I don't want to spoil the game. Of course, that's uh, not a good idea at this stage. No one's been playing it. I don't want to know the ending, but you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there's been a humanity has been wiped out by a number of different disasters: nuclear war, uh, and also a plague that swept. Before that, a plague swept the world, which took out about 75% of the population. And yeah. Then it, the world is kind of a destroyed Earth. It's a, it is post-apocalyptic, but a little bit different because we've got the the mutants now involved in this, not zombies in, and the usual in, stuff. In right? short, it's kind of uh, um, the mutants come from 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 uh, um, a trip. The the guy that runs the the ark, which is sort of the last uh, remain uh, sort of outhold stronghold of the um, of the uh, of the humankind, is uh, is gone missing, and you've been picked to to go and find him. Okay. I can I can get behind that. Yeah. Uh, now, are there any are there any like civiliz civilizations or are there like towns or sort of non combat areas? Well, the the, the yeah, mutants they they, uh, they have a place they stronghold. Uh, it's like a village really. That's called the Ark, and that's where they they're safe because they live in an area. Well, a part of the world is called the Zone, uh, which is what the, the mutants refer to as the the world outside of their. Uh, natural sort of safe place, which is the Ark. And the Ark is actually is like a converted bridge. It's like a, a bridge that's, uh, they've built like a, a, yeah, a little bit like a sort of barter town kind of feel uh, going on there, right? Uh, and they're safe in this, and that's their village. That's where their elder uh, lives, and that's where they go back after a day's stalking, where they go around into the zone collecting uh, resources for the Ark. Okay, so is that sort of that's your sort of your your hub world type of thing? Or yes, okay. it's, the, it's it's kind of the hub. You can you can go in there and you can buy items and you can hear rumors and get missions, this kind of stuff. All right, and how how this, in terms of the sort of the story, the missions and and how that unfolds, is it is it fairly linear or is it does it let you kind of pick and choose how you go about it? Um, there is a there is a story that runs through the game, uh, and you you can follow that. There are some side missions and so, well. Uh, side areas to go and explore that are related somewhat to the main story, but there is a story from A to B. Uh, follow. Yeah. Now, I know one thing that, and I, I apologize for repeatedly comparing this to XCOM, I swear that's not a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing people always talk about is sort of the, 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 the tragedy of losing, losing a character that you really get attached to. Uh, do you have a system like that here? Yeah, we will support a, like an Iron Man style system, so you can get really attached to a character and then once they're gone, they're gonna be gone. Yeah, oh man, I don't, I don't like, I don't like that at all. I don't want to. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think uh, if if you if you are uh, getting attached to your uh, ex film characters, you you're definitely gonna be really attached to to the to ours. Yeah, that's for sure. They're but, like um, <laughs> lovable animals too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have their own personalities and quirks, and as you play through the game, you'll start to you'll probably find a favorite in, in between uh, the group, uh, and then you'll. Uh, Feel even more heartbroken when uh, when you lose them, I guess. Are there different classes for characters, or are they kind of just character based? 
Um, well, the characters themselves, they are just sort of, they, they're what we call, they're called stalkers in the universe. And uh, they're not stalkers in like a social media sense where they just follow people <laughs> around. Um, they're, they go out and they're, they're hunter-gatherers. They, 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 they go out and, and get food and resources for the art. Um, the characters themselves, there's th they have differences between them uh, here and there, but for the most part, they're pre-generated. Um, the enemies, however, there's a lot of different uh, types of enemy. And the enemies have different classes, and they're quite clear, and that's actually quite a big part of the game, where you'll need to sort of tailor your mutation of weapons when you encounter certain enemies, because you, you need to be able to match them at their own game, so to speak. And how much of that reconfiguration can be done sort of on the fly? On the fly, uh, you can, uh, once you've unlocked the mutations, you can swap them anytime outside of combat. And uh, same with weapons and weapon attachments, and also party members. Uh, so if you have, uh, at the moment, when you're playing the game, you have three party members. Uh, in this demo, we've only got two unlocked at the moment. Um, you have a maximum of three active, but you can have more than that. And as long as you're not in combat, you can swap those out at any time. So you can, we, we call it the golf bag approach. So you can just go there, uh, look, recon an area, and then you can say, okay, this is, uh, I'm going to require these kind of things. And then you set up your characters accordingly. And of course, the recon is, is a whole sort of component in and of itself, because that's a... Yeah, I think um, the way we sort of uh, laid out the, the map is that um, you have the exploration where you sort of gather the resources and, and, and get the feel for the world. And then once you can come into uh, contact with uh, enemies, you get the sneak element where you sort of set up the uh, y your parameters and, and, you, you, and strategy. And then once you get into combat and you get into a turn base, that's kind of when you roll your dice. And either you go through or you need to rethink your, uh, your approach. And I think that's the way we wanted to take this uh, IP as a, as a role-playing game, and rather than doing it uh, as a, 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 a turn-based sort of uh, strategy j game or, or uh, a, a um, sort of uh, it adds, it any, adds any a, other kind of game, we, we kind of wanted to, to sort of take this and sort of give this format as, as, a, as, a, as an RPG awesome. kind of an experience. It adds a wonderful wrinkle. Uh, and this is out 2019 at some point? Um, it's it's uh, 2018. 20, oh, 20? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's 2018. Uh, the game is out when we feel it's ready. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but right now, that's this year. And you're looking at PC and consoles? Absolutely. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, if you need to take a break, now is the time, but make it quick because we'll be back in 60 seconds with James Duggan and a look at the state of Battle Royale. <laughs>